Hello there, my name's Tom. Have you guys ever been to another historical period? No? Then enjoy listening to my story where I managed to step back several millennia to get a taste of that ancient era. Now I've been fond of history ever since I was a little kid. After reading a ton of books, I became fascinated with the idea of inventing a time machine. I did my research and drew up blueprints, but as soon as I started the actual project, a new idea would strike me. I spread myself so thin I just couldn't concentrate on my main objective. When I grew up, my parents came to terms with my obsession and gave me a dedicated room for my studies. I spent all my free time there. Wires, large and small mechanical parts, and beakers with colorful liquid cluttered the room. My friends didn't share my interests, so I had to work alone. I wish I could take a friend or two on my journey through time. I wish I could make them see how incredibly cool it would be to step back a few centuries and see how our ancestors survived in their cities 300 years ago. But nobody paid any attention to my passionate stories. Eventually, they thought I was out of my mind and suggested that I consult a psychiatrist. But it just motivated me to make headway with my projects so that I could prove my theories to them. Month of hard work paid off. Sometimes when I launched my time machine, I could see the air in my room fluctuate and flicker and fill with unknown smells and noises. It was so empowering to see a confirmation that I was on the right track. This invigorated my enthusiasm to keep striving for success. On that fateful day, my time machine was ready for another test launch. I'd spent a while choosing the era that I'd ideally wanted to visit. Finally, I decided I was really curious to see the caveman and test my metal in the primitive tribe. I triple-checked my reference sources, crafted a line cloth, and packed some matches, a knife, and diarrhea pills. When I flipped the switch, everything cracked and sparkled, colorful liquid bubbled in the beakers, steam popped at the exhaust pipe. Then the walls of my room seemed to dissolve and there was a bright flash of light. I blacked out for a moment and I woke in a stony soil. The first thing I saw was many, many bare feet stumping around me. The size of the feet was astonishing. They were caked with dirt and clay, evidently unwashed for months. A lifetime of walking barefoot made the caveman's feet so rough that their skin resembled the soles of modern boots. While I was staring at the feet, their owners were staring at me. Before I looked up and saw their faces, I thought, what's so exciting about me that they've crowded around like this? But when I raised my head, I was stupefied by the sight. These hairy slouching creatures didn't really resemble humans. Rather, they looked like large apes that I used to love watching in the city zoo. One of the creatures, who seemed to be in charge, poked me with a stick. I scanned my surroundings for an escape route cautiously before I got up. I was surprised to see how short I was compared to them. The caveman made a guttural noise, which was apparently a command to retreat. One of them gestured to me with his hand as a sign that I should follow them. We walked until we approached the cave with a pile of large furry animal covering the entrance. As soon as I came in, the stench of rotting meat blasted up my nose. I looked around. The floor was littered with bones and scraps of meat. Everyone was looking at me inquisitively, and I shuddered at the thought that the sight of my white-skinned body probably evoked an inhuman hunger in them. So I spoke. They were incredibly impressed. They stared at me and peeked into my mouth. After they saw my tongue, they stuck out their own tongues and examined each other's. It looked so funny, I couldn't help it and started to laugh. Then I started humming a song. Whenever I stopped singing, they'd encroach upon me and I'd sing again. I performed every song I knew, but they still demanded an encore. They ripped a piece of meat of carcass that was lying around and stuffed it in my mouth. I felt sick and rushed for the exit. But they weren't about to let me go that easily. Thus, my role in the cave was cast at the tireless nightingale nourished with raw meat. I didn't relish the prospect at all. I was getting really eager to get away, but they'd hit me with a stick every time I tried to twitch towards the exit. It wasn't funny anymore. I needed to find a way out. So after I sang a few more songs, I noticed my audience was asleep. I made a beeline for the exit, but I tripped over someone who was lying on the ground. When he opened his eyes and chased after me, others woke up as well. I gathered all my meager strength and turned tail, even though I was hardly a match for my naturally fit pursuers. Then one of them threw a huge rock that hit me on the head and I collapsed. 
When I opened my eyes, I saw the faces of my parents. They were barely visible through thick smoke and their voices were almost inaudible. Emergency repair crew was working on fixing the power that went out in the entire house because of the electric short circuit in my room. Firemen were filling out a fire safety breach report. I was watching them calmly and indifferently. I wasn't even sad about the broken time machine. All I wanted was to kiss every inch of my room and to thank my parents for having me during the height of human civilization. Even severe concussion didn't bother me. Obviously, it wasn't a rock thrown by a prehistoric human that caused it. I simply fell out of my chair when my own invention electrocuted me. Do you guys want more episodes? Then press the like button, subscribe and hit the bell. Wanna see your own story? Then send them over to this email here.